Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate your dark and dark flats acquisition in Nina using the basic sequencer and how to stack them in PixInsight to build your dark and dark flats library. I keep a library of darks and dark flats so I can reuse them and that is made possible due to the fact that I'm using a cooled astro camera. I try to update this library at least once a year and try to make best use of occasions where the skies are covered with clouds. I'm in Nina right now. I have my equipment connected and all you need is uh, your camera and uh, maybe your filter wheel if you want to uh, pay attention to every possible detail like I want. Uh, the rest of the equipment you don't really need to have uh, connected at this time. So start off by cooling your camera to the correct temperature. And right now I'm taking darks and dark flats for uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius. So I have cooled my camera to that temperature. We're starting by going to the sequencer and I'm going to add a new target. I'm going to call this darks just for the fun of it. And I'm going to take darks and uh, dark flats in this session because I uh, normally reuse dark flats as well since I'm using the uh, flat wizard and dynamic brightness setting. I have exactly the same exposure time every time for my flats and that helps with uh, reusing dark flats. I try to take new darks uh, every year for my dark library. I might do it uh, more often than that because it's really not a big issue when you have an observatory and just can connect to your equipment uh, outside and take these. Starting off with the darks, I don't want any dithering. I want to set the type to dark. I'm usually using uh, very few different exposure times right now anyway. So I'm using a 30 second exposure. I can use the current filter for this because the filter doesn't really matter for darks. I want to take 40 darks and I'm going to change this. I'm going to start with uh, 10 seconds because I might use uh, 10 seconds exposures on the Orion Nebula later on this season. So uh, I want 10 seconds. I also want 30 second exposure. I want to have 60 second exposure. I want to have 120 second exposure and I want to have a 300 second exposure. So these are my darks. These are the exposure times that I normally use. And since this is for minus 10 degrees Celsius, I need to repeat this process for the other temperatures. I also take uh, calibration frames for minus 15 Celsius and minus 20 Celsius to be able to cover every type of temperature and weather situation that might occur during my season. So the next thing is dark flats. So I'm uh, clicking new here, I'm clicking dark flat. I'm going to take these 
for all filters because I use different exposure times. So uh, I know it might be uh, a bit overkill to do uh, separate dark flats for each narrowband filter, but I like to do it anyway. So starting with HA, I know that I'm using a, a six second exposure for my dark uh, flats for the narrowband filters. So I'm adding my HA here. Uh, I'm also doing O3 and S2. Like I said, a bit redundant. I could be using the same dark flat for these three, but better safe than sorry. I'd like to match all parameters, temperature, uh, gain, offset, uh, exposure time, and filter. Uh, then I'm going to be taking for my broadband filters and I'm using a three and a half second exposure time for my broadband filters. And uh, that is just because uh, it gets way too bright if I'm using six seconds, even though I have a flat master 150 at my disposal. It, uh, it gets too bright uh, for the broadband filters. I also don't want to use a shorter exposure time than 3.5 seconds because there have been issues reported with my camera not performing at its best for exposure times uh, below three seconds. So I really want to have three and a half seconds. So that is what I'm using for my flats. Three and a half seconds for my broadband. I'm using dynamic brightness later to let my flat master set the brightness level according to that. And six seconds for my narrowband filters and the brightness uh, adjusts per filter. So I uh, really have different brightness settings for all of my seven filters, I would say. So now I have programmed in all of my darks and dark flats for minus 10 uh, degrees Celsius. And then I just uh, start this sequence and let it run through and then change the settings to minus 15. Run this through again after a reset up here and run it through one last time for minus 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, integrate these into master darks and master dark flats. Since uh, this is going to be a lot of frames, I'm not actually saving the individual frames. I'm just saving the master darks and master dark flats later on uh, on my computer. So for each imaging session later on, I would need to take flats every time. And I can do that uh, before I start to image, or I'm doing it after I have finished imaging and closed the observatory. I actually have the Flatmaster 150 mounted on the wall and uh, when I have my uh, scope parked at the observatory park position that it is now, I can actually just take flats because the scope is aligned with the flat panel at this position. So uh, if you get any uh, anything on the telescope during the session, it's always best to take flats after the session, because if you take the flats before the session, there might be some uh, filth, uh, dirt, uh, dust, snowflake, something like that on your telescope, and that will affect your images. So just to recap the darks and the dark flats, you can reuse if you have a cooled Astro camera, I can control the temperature and settings here, but the flats you need to take for each session 
and you calibrate the flats uh, from each session with the dark flats that you are taking here. I finished with uh, some of my dark frames and I thought I would uh, show you how to integrate them. You start by opening the image integration. I've made a shortcut here with the relevant settings for a dark frame. So you want to use the average combination uh, without any normalization and you don't care about the weights at all. You want to generate an integrated image here. And you want to use uh, linear fit clipping without normalization as uh, pixel rejection and basically keep uh, all of the uh, other settings at a default. So I'm going to add some files here now. I'm going to go to my images uh, folder where I have my dark frames. And this is the first 40 of the dark frames that we just programmed into a sequence. Double check to see that all of the frames are darks, that you have 40 of them, that you have not mixed up any of the exposure times. So you have 10 seconds for all of the frames here and that all of the frames are at minus 10 degrees Celsius. When you have confirmed that, you will uh, click on the uh, Apply Global to uh, integrate this into a master dark. The process has finished. You can stretch the file just to verify that there is no funny business uh, or strange things happening. You can see there is some amp glow here, but this is only 10 seconds. This will be uh, far more visible on a 300 second. So I'm going to save this in my dark library. And it is 10 second exposure, master dark at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Looking at my dark folder here, you can see that I have my master darks already made for most of the different types of temperatures and exposures. I'm missing a few here, but you can see I have master dark for 10, 30, 60, 120 and 300 seconds. And I want to have it for all of the three temperatures that we discussed earlier. I also have the master dark flat folder uh, finished and completed here. As you can see, I have my master dark flats for, for the uh, LRGB broadband filters at three and a half seconds, one for each uh, temperature setting and uh, for the HAO3S2 narrowband filters at six seconds and uh, also for each uh, temperature. Now, the good thing about having a dark library is of course that you uh, don't need to spend a lot of time taking darks and dark flats and retaking them. Uh, of course, it helps with a cooled Astro camera where you can control the temperature. I've noticed that as soon as you get uh, variations above uh, two or three degrees, it starts affecting your images. So if you're using uh, a DSLR, for example, without the ability to cool the camera, you really need to take darks and dark flats or bias frames if you use those instead uh, for uh, temperatures at around two to three degrees intervals. And that could be tedious. Uh, also tedious to take these for each session, I would say. I used to have a library with my DSLR and uh, adding to that for temperatures 
that uh, I stumbled across for each night. But a main problem is that it might vary uh, in temperature during the night as well. And you don't have that problem with the cooled Astro camera. So if you came to this video uh, for the purpose of learning more about calibration frames, I have made an extensive video about pre-processing and image calibration in PixInsight that you can watch. So simply go to my channel uh, and uh, look at the PixInsight tutorial playlist or search for the PixInsight tutorial part one, pre-processing uh, pre -processing image calibration and Look at that if you want to know more about uh, this. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to support me and the production of these videos, there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video, I wish you have clear skies. Thank you.